And interesting question, since each of our test cars reflects a different aspect of Enzo Ferrari's legendary automotive passion. The F-355 likens itself to the thoroughbred racing machines on which Scuderia Ferrari was founded and which dominated the Grand Prix circuit in the early post-war years. That era of the gentleman's racer lives on in the F-355, and its racing impact is lessened not a bit by our Spider's drop-top design. Exterior styling is an obvious evolution of the 308, 328, 348 family. But like those earlier generations, it has dipped into the Marinello gene pool and emerged with a look just modern enough to keep heads turning, but with the classic style that is unmistakably Ferrari. So fluid is the design, it looks like the metal was poured over the chassis. From the Cheshire Cat grinning air intake, past the deep side strakes, to the trademark quad round tail lamps, we think Enzo would approve of every inch. The Spider soft top perfectly mimics the coupe's lines, even down to the flying buttresses, and operates flawlessly with a combination of manual and first-time electric controls. The entire sequence takes about 20 seconds, but taller drivers may want to exit the car first as the seats are automatically pushed forward seven inches to accommodate the procedure. Keeping that gorgeous body on the pavement is the job of these 40 series 18-inch Pirelli P0s, 225s up front and 265s in the rear. They provide the traction for 0 to 60 sprints of 4.6 seconds and quarter mile dashes of 13 seconds flat at 106 miles per hour. Of course, the engine has something to do with those times and puts up some impressive numbers of its own. How about 375 horsepower from a 3.5 liter V8 at 8,250 RPM? Torque figures are a bit lower at 268 pound feet and serve as a reminder to keep the revs up, which we did at Pocono International Raceway, tackling the high banks and road courses thanks to our test spider's generous but thankfully absent owner. Handling improves dramatically over that of the 348, with a refinement and balance not found before. The F355 still makes the driver work a bit, but the well-damped steering, mild understeer, and responsive throttle make the job a lot more entertaining. Even rowing through the gated gearbox is easier now, thanks to a slicker action and more positive clutch engagement. The addition of a sixth gear should make gobbling up your favorite road more economical, too. And with a base price of $130,000, you may need to save those gas pennies as you race from pump to pump. Another hallmark of the Ferrari legend was his flair for producing exceptional Gran Turismo road cars. And the 456 GT marks the return of the classic front-engine, rear-drive V12 Ferrari Cruiser. The engine itself is a work of art, with elements like the crisscrossing intake runners actually out where you can see them, not encased in plastic like most other modern cars. Engine output is a gargantuan 442 horsepower, and with 4,280 pounds to haul around, it needs every bit of its 406 pound-feet of torque. Combining the grace and poise of a luxury car with the heart and soul of a racer was a special talent of Ferraris, and the 456 GT certainly springs from the same mold. The shape is sensuous and classical. The subtle curves and restrained demeanor stand in sharp contrast to the boy racerist 355. While we expected that car to be red, we're glad this one isn't. The interior of our 456 GT isn't red either, thank goodness, but a tastefully rich tan leather. The layout gives a passing nod to passengers both front and rear, but this car is really designed for one person, the driver, and for that lucky soul, this is the most comfortable, user-friendly Ferrari yet. And to that end, all switchgear falls easily to hand, mostly situated low on the console. Secondary controls and extra gauges reside higher up on the center dash. The overall effect is still clean and simple, yet imparts an expensive aura. The seats are unusually well padded for a Ferrari, no doubt to coddle the richest of posteriors, but supportive too in all the right places to accommodate a bit of serious driving, which we wasted no time in doing. The 456 GT gives up less than a half second to its smaller sibling, devouring the quarter mile in 13.4 seconds at 109 miles per hour and clipping off zero to 60 runs in a mere 5.1 seconds. Carving through the first of Pocono's high-speed sweepers, you feel the extra bulk of the 2 Plus 2 and experience an ever-so-slight floatiness to the ride. But the ZF variable assist power steering took less time getting used to. 
And as soon as the turns get serious, you swear the car seems to shrink around you. Corners are attacked with surgical precision, and the adjustable suspension hungers for more. At the mercy of your right foot is the power of all the demons in hell, and you forget for a moment the world around you and the car's $200,000 price tag. You focus instead on clipping the next apex, juicing the tail out just a little further in each corner, and feeling your way through the gated six-speed shifter. It takes but two or three laps to realize you're overtaking the smaller, nimbler 355. This is the magic of Ferrari. A quick stab at the ABS-assisted four-wheel disc brakes hurdles you back to a more realistic speed, and the 17-inch Bridgestone tires finally get a chance to cool off. Pit lane comparisons are inevitable in a back-to-back -back run like this, but these cars are best noted for their different approaches to the same fast conclusion. The F-355 is a high-strung sprinter, wanting always to go flat out and occasionally showing its temperament. The 456 GT behaves like a seasoned steeplechaser, always balanced and graceful, but with plenty of kick and reserve for smoothing over the tricky spots. Every car Mr. Ferrari made bore the indelible mark of its creator. Although he's gone now, the F-355 Spider and 456 GT are proof that the spirit and passion of Enzo are very much alive in Marinello.